All right, so you just got a big old waves bundle and you want to put it on your vocals, but where do you start? Here's my go-to processing on vocals so that you can get that studio sound in a live environment. See if you can pick up some new secrets for your setup. Hey, if you're new here, go ahead and hit subscribe and ding the little bell for more tutorials on making worship sound great at your church. The first thing you have to do after you get waves routed is make sure that the insert is in the right spot. I like to put my waves processors after my filters and EQ. This way I can cut out all the nasty low end and keep that from triggering my compressors. So after it's routed and the insert's in the right place, I like to put F6 on. This helps me tame certain frequencies before it hits the compressor so that my compressor is responding to overall well-balanced levels rather than one frequency that jumps out. No, I just learned a new use for this and I'm loving it. Stay to the end and I'll tell you about it. If I'm not using F6 to DS, I'll go ahead and put a DSer on next. The reason I like my DSing earlier in the chain is that the S's and T's tend to be at about the same level, whether or not the singer's singing loud or singing quietly. So no matter how I compress it down the line, those S's and T's are at their most consistent point earlier in the vocal chain. With the DSer, I'm just trying to grab the S's and T's. I don't want it to compress on the vowel sounds. I like a nice, bright, airy vocal, and the DSer can take that away if you're not careful. Right here in this room, God, we sing it out. We lift your name, we lift your name up higher, higher. We lift your name up, Jesus be glorified. We lift your name up higher, higher. We lift your name up, Jesus. So let's sing hallelujah. So it's pretty simple, but you gotta be real careful where you put your threshold. After my DSer, I like to go into the CLA 2A. This is an optical compressor that's really slow and gentle and somewhat transparent. It does add a sort of squishy, tubey vibe to the signal that's really nice as well. This is great for capturing overall level changes and really wide dynamic range. It can kind of pin a vocal in the spot without it feeling like it's compressed. Now, I usually just load it up and go with the start me up setting. You might also try some of the vocal presets. This adjusts this little secret high frequency sensitivity knob that can give it a different tone and texture of the compression. This changes the way that the compressor relates to the high frequencies versus the low frequencies. I haven't figured it all out, but I like it either on the vocal setting or on the start me up and it just works. The other great thing about the LA-2A is there's just two knobs. Well, three if you count the secret one. If you've got your gain set right coming into the unit, all you have to do is turn up the peak reduction and let it do its thing. This is essentially lowering the threshold. Now, if you compress a whole lot, you might have to boost the gain a little bit, but I try to avoid this in a live setting because I'm trying to make it so that my gain structure is as transparent as possible. I don't wanna be adding loads and loads of gain to my vocal, especially since it's the most feedback prone input on stage. I leave it in compress mode rather than limit because I'm trying to get the whole dynamic range to compress a little bit, not just the peaks. One other thing that I do is turn off the analog modeling. I'm trying to get my noise floor down as far as possible, especially if I'm mixing to broadcast at the same time. With this compressor, I'm aiming for anywhere from three to 10 dB of compression. Now that's a big difference, but when a singer's singing really quietly to when they're singing really loud, this compressor helps to tame a really dynamic vocal. And again, you don't really hear it when it's really squashing a bunch. It's a great compressor to have. So this singer is really dynamic, so he might crush a little bit more than usual on the LA-2A. The good thing is that you don't really hear the compressor I'd, right here in this room, God, we sing it out. We lift your name, we lift your name up higher, higher. We lift your name up, Jesus be glorified. The next plugin in my chain is the CLA 76. I usually choose bluey mode and select the male or female vocal setting. The only real difference is the attack time, so you can change that on the fly if you loaded the wrong one. If you set up your gain the right way, this should just grab the peaks of what's coming through on the LA-2A. The 1176 can give you that really big, in-your-face pop vocal sound, but if you push it too hard, it can also make your vocal sound thin and harsh, and that's no good on top of a big mix. Now, you've gotta be careful with the gain structure on this unit, because all you've got are input and output controls. The threshold is essentially fixed, so the more you drive into the input, the more compression you'll have. If you want it to compress a little bit more, turn up the input and turn down the output. If you need a little bit more level before your fader, turn up the output gain. Now listen as I put the 1176 in the chain. For the Lord our God, He reigns, yes, He reigns. 
We come to give you glory. We give you glory. You're the Lord our God. Yes, you reign. Let's declare you reign. You reign. It takes quite a bit of gain into the 1176 to really start compressing. Again, this compressor is just trying to grab the peaks that got to sneak through on the LA-2A. Listen as I take it too far and you'll hear how it squashes. Rain, you reign. We sing hallelujah, hallelujah for the Lord our God. He reigns, yes, he reigns. We come to give you glory. Did you hear how it got smaller? Yeah, you want to avoid that, so don't overdo it with your 1176. The last processor that I have in my Waves vocal chain is the C6. The C6 can really help me balance the tonal variation between when they're singing low and when they're singing high. My preset's pretty simple. I basically just modify the pop vocal setting in the old school C4 menu. I load that up, put the gains back to zero, and move my low crossover all the way up to 250. This way, when the singer goes down, it's compressing those notes. When they're going up, it's compressing those notes. But whenever it's compressing either one of the two, the high mids and the presence is still gonna stay there in the same spot. It's also giving me a little bit more de from what got brought up from all the compression from the 1176 and the LA-2A. Having the two extra floating bands can really help me grab any other problem frequencies that are still coming through even after all that compression. Since this is the last plugin in my chain, I'm gonna check right here for headroom and boost it up a little bit if I need a little bit more juice before it gets to the fader. Pay attention to the low and the low mid band to see how it balances out the tone of the vocal as they change ranges. You So it's like you have a secret weapon to get this vocal tone balanced no matter where they're singing. All right, here's the new trick that I've been learning with F6 and I love it. Essentially, it's taking out the specific frequencies that get harsh on a vocal. Did you ever have a whistle where you blew on it and it made one note and you blew on it really hard and it made a higher note? That happens with your singer's vocal cords when they're really pushing and going for it. It's actually a whistle tone that's coming from in between the vocal cords and it creates a very narrow tone at very specific frequencies. So to tame this, I use F6 as a dynamic EQ with a very, very narrow bandwidth. As I lower the threshold on all these bands, it's only gonna compress when those frequencies jump out and it's only gonna compress in a very narrow bandwidth. So it tends to mellow out all that harshness and brashness when a vocal really goes for it. If you'll remember from my vocal EQ tutorial, that high mid cut to try to get some of that harshness out when they really go for it. This is taking that out dynamically and very selectively. Now there are more frequencies that this happens at than there are bands on F6. So I set up whistle tone one, which is the lower frequencies and whistle tone two, which is the higher frequencies. Waves lets you A, B between two different settings. So I'll load one onto A and the other onto B and click back and forth to see which one mellows it out better. The end result is that I can have very present in your face vocals that aren't harsh and don't hurt. And I like that a lot, especially on a big mix. I'll take it in and out of the vocal chain and see if you can hear the specific frequencies that jump out and give it that harshness. Check it out. We lift your name up higher, higher. We lift your name up. Jesus, be glorified. Right here in this room, God, we sing it out. We lift your name. We lift your name up higher, higher. We lift your name up, Jesus be glorified. We lift your name up. Okay, so it worked on him. Let's listen to another singer and see what it sounds like. Stand alone in glory and majesty. You stand alone in glory and majesty. You stand alone in glory and majesty. You stand alone. You stand alone. You stand alone in glory and majesty. You stand alone in glory and majesty. You stand alone in glory and majesty. You stand alone. It makes it so much mellower, but it doesn't kill all the presence of the vocal. I love it. The only problem is, now I don't want to mix without it. This last weekend, I got my mix hotter than I ever have in here, and it wasn't even close to harsh. Now that was great. Let me play a little bit of it for you. Listen.
subscribe yet, you really should. Don't forget to check out my other tutorials, and we'll see you back here next time.